fall in love with printmaking my very first semester was this slightly obscure technique called chicole where you are you take a you have a copper plate that you're printing that has an image on it but then you're all you're simultaneously gluing a collage while you're printing so it's essentially you're gluing on top of a collaged image and usually people use that just to like introduce a piece of toned paper or something like that just a subtle shift but I realized that you could use kind of anything and so I was collaging in um, all sorts of stuff anything I could get my hands on commercial material you know stuff out of popular culture printed imagery blah blah, blah. and so realizing that oh with this one plate I could have like all these different kinds of images um, relatively quickly and uh, and that is the moment for me that I was like yeah this is amazing yeah. one of the most common ways that people define it is the ability to make a multiple uh, to make uh, more than one print uh, where all the prints look exactly the same. And we, we call that an addition. Well, there's no one process. Essentially, what print is, is any technology where an image or a mark is transferred from one surface to another. You have what we call a matrix, and the matrix can be the wood block, the copper plate, the screen, but also a digital file that you have on your computer and that you use to print from. So the matrix is kind of the, the, the thing that makes the print and most of the labor is done preparing the matrix. Once the matrix is prepared, then you can print. I'm a big believer in collaborative projects um, for a lot of reasons. Maybe the two biggest is that within, in, an, in a school setting, collaboration affords a lot more learning. We want them to start defining their own conceptual practice, their own conceptual stylistic direction. Um, the goal is, of course, that they graduate and feel uh, grounded on their own two feet, grounded in their own direction. You know, since about 2007 or something, uh, my work has been based almost exclusively in screen printing and and has engaged significantly with color. Um, prior to that, my work was uh, based in intaglio copper plate printing and was mostly black and white. Um, and I never thought, you know, during and during those years, I never thought that I would make screen prints in my own work. Um, I knew I loved teaching screen printing, but I didn't think that I would use it in my own work. But, uh, but I did indeed make this shift, and it was, it was one Christmas break, and I just thought, you know, I've, just, I've got these ideas that I want to try, and I'm kind of, I had kind of worked myself into a corner in what I was doing with Intaglio, and so I just decided, well, this Christmas break, I'm going to do all these crazy screen prints and see what happens. Um, I didn't, even at that moment, I didn't anticipate that, oh, I'm never going to go back, I'm going to stick with screen printing, but that's in fact what happened. And that would not have happened if I had not been teaching screen printing um, for seven, eight years before that. So I'll design these collaborative projects in which I am participating. And this is particularly with the advanced students. Um, so we're doing one now where everybody, every, every student in the class has to make a version of uh, an image of the full moon. But the idea is that um, these versions of the full moon will be printed, they'll be, they're, it's all going to be screen printed, but they're going to be screen printed in a lot of different ways. Um, there'll be one print where it's just this student's version of the moon by itself, but then the next print will be that same student's version of the moon, but printed on top of another student's like, version of the moon. And so there, there will be prints with one layer, there will be prints with 20 layers. I'm doing a series that I am currently calling Future Castles, and uh, uh, they are kind of by, in, in colloquial language, I would say they're largely abstract. They seem to be very, 
They're very brush strokey, uh, but they also seem to suggest a sense of space, almost as if the brush stroke is moving through space, almost as if the brush stroke itself is like, I don't know, the size of the Empire State Building or something. And, and, and I play with color a lot and light effects a lot to make it seem kind of overly dramatic. And, um, and there's a part of me which is very serious about art and stuff, but there's also a part of me which is very playful and populist and in art.